Every seller has a story. I'm Georgia Mampanis, and welcome to our newest episode of the eBay Seller Spotlight Podcast, where each month we spotlight sellers with a story to share with us. Our guest this episode was scouted to join the team at My Deep Pins and Collectibles, a small business that specializes in all things collectibles, back in 2014 for her trading abilities. She is now the senior manager at the store. Welcome, Mayumi Ro. Hi, Georgia. I'm so glad to be here. Is it your first time on campus? It's my first time on campus. It's my first eBay open. It's a lot of firsts this week. Okay. Yeah. Are you feeling overwhelmed? I was a little nervous coming in, but everyone's been so hospitable and friendly. All the other sellers are so eager to share their experiences and what they use in their businesses. And it's been very eye-opening and learning. Any um, friends that you've made? People you're going to keep in touch with? Yeah, I hope so. There's a couple people from Florida that I've touched base with, and I found somebody in Wisconsin who knows some of my family members out there. So it's just little fun happenstances. I didn't mention you work on my deep pins and collectibles. What is that? What do you sell? It is a hobby store, I would say. We sell pop culture collectibles mostly. We don't really do too much sports, but Disney, Marvel, DC, NECA, it's horror stuff, Pokemon, everything we can accommodate in the store we try to. Okay, wait, horror stuff. So like Halloween, Jason, Sam, Trick or Treat, Chucky, like it's, yeah, we have a whole section in our store for the NECA brand and that's six inch scale mostly, but they do some bigger scale figures too for decorations. So you're the senior manager. Why'd you get involved with the company and with eBay specifically? I came onto the company and they were using eBay, but not to the extent we are now. Before, they were selling only their doubles of pens on eBay and everything else would be only in the store. And I was like, why are, why are we limiting ourselves? Let's show it to everybody and then get a bigger audience. And it's really helped us grow. So you helped them grow the business. I feel like I did. Yeah. A little pat on the shoulder. Yeah, we'll give you credit for it. I was... A fan of the store before I started working there. I was going to their trade events and the owner, Josh, liked how I was trading with him. And he noticed how I was with other people. And I was trading a lot for somebody who was fairly new to the community. The community has been around for 20 years and I started in 2011, maybe 12 or so. But I started working with the store eight years ago. So 2015, maybe. I would say I was a casual collector. And then in 2014, 15 is when I started doing the trade events with the experienced Disney people. So you were doing it casually. So that wasn't your full time job. What were you doing before this? Oh, my God, it was the worst. I oh no. OK, so I worked for a college textbook store and that industry is I think it's a rip off. It's a rip off to their students. It's the access codes. The one-time use stuff, making people buy all new things. They tried to kill the used market. It tried to make every student buy new. As a textbook store, we would get a lot of students coming back wanting to sell their stuff, and we just couldn't, or we just had to offer extremely low rates. I bought it for 60 and I get back 60 cents. But yeah, I remember one review. I think it called me the GameStop of people, and it really hurt me. Yeah, I, I remember that review to this day. It uh, it stung because I'm also a gamer. I I know GameStop's buyback rates aren't great either. But yeah, that's like with the not personal aspect of it. I was actually selling on Half.com for the textbooks. I'm not familiar with that. Half.com was the the book portion that eBay used to run. I think it closed maybe five years ago. Longer now. Okay, wow. Interesting. Okay, so did you meet people that are in the industry? Like, where did this hobby stem from? So I was what they call a childless millennial spending all my time at Disneyland. And yeah, I, I had my annual pass. I was in my early 20s. And we were always going to Disney. And, you know, you pick up different things to do when you've gone on the rides all the time. You find a new way to enjoy the parks. So pin trading was a way so I could still go, go and get the new releases. And we learned about pin trading nights. And that's how I started trading more with people instead of just buying to collect. So I know about the trading cards, you know, that hobby. It's a pretty big one. What does the pin hobby look like? <laughs> the pin hobby is... I've seen it change from different fads, but everyone's doing the same thing. They're schlepping around so many bags of metal. And some people can come with just a lanyard or they'll come with a backpack. 
Some people come in with a whole two or three suitcases of pins at events. Yeah, there's room for everybody, no matter how like much you want to bring to trade. Did the value go up over time? For trading, they used to do one for one based on edition sizes. But that's changed now where more people are trading value wise, monetary wise. So everyone's using eBay as like a benchmark to see what things are going for. Okay. Do you have a favorite pin? I am at a point where I'm very content with my collection. It's so hard for me to find things I'm still missing that I haven't gotten yet. But I like helping people find their their grail pins. And that's been very fulfilling for me. But one thing I do cherish is I have a Rapunzel portrait. And it's more of an art piece than a pin. So in Florida... There is a princess fairy tale hall where you can meet two different princesses depending what time of day it is. And in the hall, they have six different portraits, and it's art that hasn't been used anywhere else. And Disney's Imagineering Company, they took those portraits and made them into pins. And I have a special set where they have a large portrait with the pin. So it's more of a hanging art piece in my home. I'm picturing like the Mona Lisa of pens. <laughs> it's like a full body portrait of a princess with a nice background. And I have one with Rapunzel on it. Now, is there like a pin that's very sought after by collectors or hard to find that like if you find this, you strike gold? Yes, there's absolutely some pieces that if you have that, you can get anything you want. You can find most people want princess pins. But there was a series by an artist called Elizabeth Gomes. And she had these beautiful hand-painted pins. And they're so hard to find in good condition. But there's one specifically with Princess Aurora. And she's sleeping in her blue dress. And I've only had that once for trade. And I, I took my time trying to find the right person to trade it to. And I wanted to go to a special collector who was going to keep it. And you had it and you gave it away. I didn't give it away. I traded it for quite a bit of for pins. But oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. wow. That's very interesting. So you are located, or at least my deep pins and collectibles is located about two miles from Disneyland. I can imagine that's very beneficial to the business. So what does sourcing look like? Obviously, you say you go to Disneyland, which is like a given, but how else do you source? So we do a lot of trade shows or conventions up and down the West Coast, and then we travel to certain ones across America. We'll go and see on the road if we can find anything on Craigslist or people selling lots on Facebook that we can go buy while we're on the road just to see different things in the area. Is it just nationally or do you travel internationally as well? We haven't touched internationally yet, but I go pretty often to Florida or to Washington. And I just got on my Facebook memories from two, maybe three summers ago. I came back from Florida with about 150 pounds of pins. 150 pounds or 150 pins? 150 pounds. Pounds of pins. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so how many pins is that? Like a thousand more? A lot. Too, too much. So, I mean, I feel like there's what? A Disney World in Tokyo. So I think that needs to be your next trip. Absolutely. I would love to go to Tokyo Disney. It's a shame that I haven't been yet, honestly. You got involved with the store through your passion for the hobby where they scouted you. There are a ton of hobbyists out there. Any word of advice for someone who is an enthusiast in a category but doesn't know how to get involved? I would say if there isn't events happening in your area, I think people should try to start them. And they'd be surprised how many other people in their community that will be interested and show up. Meetup is a great app for that just to start off as a low-key way. But yeah, I think starting events in your own area is a great way to see and connect with people in your area. Okay, social media. What is that looking like for the pin hobbyists? The hashtags have been very helpful on Instagram. Disney pin trading, Disney pins. We do a lot of Instagram live with our Disney pins. We'll uh, start around 11 a.m. Pacific and we'll go live for a couple hours and sell on that platform. No one needs to know that. Go on their eBay store, not on VIG <laughs> <the> Live. <laughs> yeah, we found that during the pandemic, it was a way for us to keep our store afloat and connect with people still who were just stuck at home. They could get their pen fix. Is there like a forum page? Like I know there's like Reddit, obviously. I'm, I'm sure there's like some forum for trading cards. What does the pen one like look like? Is there an online community? There used to be a site called Disney Pen Forum. I don't know if they're still active. I know there is a Disney pin Reddit, but I have not dabbled in it. I'm mostly a, an Instagram and Facebook person. What does the future look like for pens? 
I hope we don't get into uh, NFT stuff. I honestly, I, I do not want that for um, pins. People tried to do grading for pins a couple of years back, and it didn't catch on. Because encapsulating a pin that way, you can't really enjoy it. You can't hang it up or wear it. There was a, a time when um, people were wearing pins on their hats for like streetwear fashion, and that's kind of faded. Everyone's into the the Eda backpacks now, the showcase backpacks to show their collection. That's very fun. Yeah, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see. I hope I get to see it. Are pins authenticated? Like, my question is like, okay, you look at a vintage like designer handbag and there's like a timestamp or like, a, you know what I mean? So people know when it was made and where. Do they have that for pins? We actually try to do as much authenticating in our store as we can. I have people who will come to me and be like, please tell me what I traded for was real and I'll sort out and sometimes they come out with like maybe 10 pins that were not real and whenever we buy collections i'm throwing away so so many pins because we don't want them in circulation i didn't know there was knockoff pins there are so many knockoff pins it's unfortunate that a lot of people will buy fake pin lots and they'll take them to trade for the real pins that are in the disney parks just to like launder it basically Oh my God, that's scary. Okay, so basically people need to come to you before they purchase pens. Yeah, we really try to get as many of the fakes out as we can. So you're doing a service to the pen community. Thank you. I'm trying, yeah. Well, this is really interesting. Thanks so much for joining us today. Where can listeners find you in your store online? So we are on eBay at MyDPins, and we use the same handle for our Instagram. And if you're in the Anaheim area, we're very close to Disneyland. And we're open seven days a week, 11 to 6. Go check them out for all your pen needs. Thank you again for joining us. This is wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Mayumi Rome is the senior manager of the eBay store MyD Pins and Collectibles. Go check out the store if you are a pen and collectible enthusiast or you just want to relive your childhood memories once in a while. We hope you'll join us on our next episode where we'll shine the spotlight on another seller with an amazing story to share. I'm your host, Georgia Mampanis. Jim Griffith is our editor-in-chief. The eBay Seller Spotlight podcast is produced by Lipson and Podcast 411.